Please rise as the flags brought up. Please join me in a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated and thank you for uh, VFW Post 1324. Could you pass the cookies, Mr. Chair? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're out of order. <laughs> so first off, I'd like to announce that we will, oh wait, first we should probably do a roll call. Yes, well, uh, good, good morning, commissioners. It's a great morning here at the Clackamas County Fair. I hope folks come on down because the weather's going to be really good today, I think. So, uh, uh, and I also wanted to make a, uh, an announcement uh, that uh, Clackamas County this year is 175 years old, uh, and uh, we're going to be planning to have a celebration uh, in October to celebrate this historic milestone. So I want to make sure folks know that uh, and can plan to participate in that when uh, when we get things scheduled and organized. So with that, I'm going to start. Uh, well, first, I'll introduce uh, our county council representatives, Mr. Stephen Madgor, and then serving as your uh, clerk of the board today is Mr. Kevin Moss. And with the roll call, our, I'll start with Commissioner Humberston. Here. Commissioner Fisher. Here. Commissioner Reynolds? Here. Commissioner Schrader? Here. Commissioner Savas? Here. Chair Bernard? Here. With that, I'm going to announce that we're going to recess as a Board of County Commissioners and convene as a Housing Authority Board for the next item. With that, again, I'd like to introduce uh, Paul Reynolds. Uh, so he's our sixth commissioner for this part of the agenda. With that, I'll ask the clerk to read the Housing Authority Consent Agenda by title. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On today's agenda, we have approval of an intergovernmental agreement between the Housing Authority and Social Services for Case Management for Housing Our Families Program, approval of an intergovernmental agreement between the Housing Authority and the region's other public housing authorities to conduct a fair market rent study, Approval of an intergovernmental agreement between the Housing Authority and Social Services for case management for the Jackson Transitional Housing Program. Uh, approval of resolution number 1932, authorizing the Housing Authority to submit the Section 8 Management Asset Program certification to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. And approval of a development services agreement with Northwest Housing Alternatives, Inc. for the development of the Pleasant Avenue Veterans Housing Project. And that concludes the Housing Authority. Authority consent agenda. Thank you, Kevin. Do any commissioners want to remove or pull an item from the agenda? With that, I'll entertain a motion. I move we approve the Housing Authority consent agenda. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the Housing Authority consent agenda. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion, motion carries. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Um, take uh, a spin around the fair, and uh, I understand that Stephen might have some pigs here on display. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> From his farm, he's not personally displaying them. I thought those 4 H'ers were actually a little bit younger. With that, I'm going to announce that we're going to adjourn as the Housing Authority Board and reconvene as the Board of County Commissioners for the remainder of the meeting. And with that, uh, we're going to have uh, folks from the fair come up. 
I, yes, come on. I, yeah, I guess down there. Okay, that's fine. Because uh, we have a couple of presentations. Okay. My name is Raylene K. Meyer, and I am the secretary of the Fair Board. And this is my other Fair Board member, Dan Sandberg. The rest of them are all out there. <laughs> we do everything, and I'd like, just like to welcome you all here. The Fair Board is a working Fair Board. We do everything from packing ice to plugging in electrical wires to dragging picnic tables to directing people to putting band-aids on knees of little kids you know we just do everything I found sandals from kids day that I turned into lost and found <laughs> so today I really appreciate you guys all coming here Lori Bothwell our manager because of this smoke she has lost her voice answering all the questions so that's why we are here but she is very glad you're all here we have a lot of events here our biggest thing today as you might know is that we have Thursday which is free till 3 but just have to pay for parking and this is a new event and we think it's going to be a great event for us. There's lots of different things to see around here. The 4-H is here. The FFA is here. Open Class is here. Great food. I've sampled a lot. Um, I guess that's about it. So I'll turn this over to Mike Bondi and the 4-H. Oh, and we have the rodeo every evening. I mean, it's rip-roaring over there. I mean, you got to get there early for your seats because if not, you are not going to get a seat. But it is a fantastic rodeo. We have also, I am very proud that the Oregon Rodeo Queen is one of our natives. I mean, the, is it the Oregon? Yes. She's from Oregon City. So we're very proud. And she was on our court for two years. So it's a tough competition. So we have a great rodeo, great cowboys over there, wonderful mean stock. But uh, it's good. All right, thank you so much. Oh, would you tell Lori I found her voice? It's over there. Oh, great. She, we need it. <laughs> She's writing notes. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> so next up, Mike Bondi. Um, the O8 OSU Extension Service is celebrating how many years? Thank you. We are here 100 years. This is our centennial year. You look good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll speak from here, and I want to welcome everyone to this year's county so fair. Um, as Raylene said, uh, it's always a great event, and this year is no different. Um, first of all, I guess I want to welcome you on behalf of Oregon State University Extension Service here in Clackamas County. This is our centennial year. Uh, it was in August of 1917 that the very first extension agent was assigned to Clackamas County. And I don't know how many in the audience uh, really kind of know a little of that history, but it's really pretty fascinating. And we wanted to just take a moment or two this morning to kind of share some of that with you. Um, this, the time of the extension service was created nationally in 1914 by an act of Congress. And in those days, there were a lot fewer services than we have today uh, that support all the citizens. Uh, and, and it was a very different world. It was an agrarian life with 80% of the people in the United States living on farms and rural land. Um, and Congress had the vision to create an extension service that was connected to the state's land-grant universities in each state in the United States and every country, or every county, pardon me, throughout the country, 3,600 counties, where we put faculty and staff from the university and it literally embedded them in the community. I'm part of a faculty and staff in the Oregon City Extension Office of 25 people and we live and work here side by side with you citizens. The purpose of Extension is to bring the university to the community, bring the power uh, and knowledge of the university to help local people solve local problems. We've been here 100 years. Uh, our centennial year is now concluding in August of 2018. And uh, we look forward to serving the next 100 years. 
Um, if you haven't had an opportunity, our extension booth is just right behind the information booth here on the main lawn. And you can find out information about our primary programs, which include 4-H Youth Development. That's our youth development program that has been active here in Clackamas County for 100 years. Um, you also can find information about our family and community health program, our forestry and natural resources program, our agriculture programs, and, and everything that we do here in Clackamas County. Many people don't know Extension, but they know 4-H. Many people don't know Extension, but they know the Master Gardeners. Many people don't know our name, but they know our programs, and we hope that we can connect you as well with those. In fact, I've got copies of our annual community report. In fact, uh, right over here, Kimberly's got uh, a pile of them. We'll distribute some around the, the audience here this morning. It, it kind of gives you a synopsis of our programs over the past year, where we're doing work in the county and the impacts that we're having uh, in the communities. Um, and then I just conclude by saying the last hundred years has had some very notable things um, that Extension has been involved in. Um, and the next hundred we expect the same. One of the, one of the things that we're most excited about as we begin our second hundred years in Clackamas County is the construction of a new Extension Education cent Center in Oregon City. Um, those are familiar with the extension office on Warner Milne Road. We're going to be just about a block and a half uh, to the east uh, on the Red Soils County campus. And um, we're just now in the permitting stage of that, that building. In fact, all the permits will go in uh, tomorrow to the city of Oregon City uh, for review. And uh, if everything goes well, we hope to break ground sometime next spring. That'll be the first extension education center here in the county that's really going to be designed for you, the people in the community, and to serve uh, everyone through our program. So we look forward to maybe seeing you, many of you there, either coming into the office for information or coming to the Master Gardener Clinic or participating in one of our many educational programs. The future of extension is really about the next generation, and I think the best example of the next generation are our 4-H kids. We've got several of them here today to share their stories with you, and I want to introduce uh, Wendy Hine. She's our, uh, one of our extension 4-H agents that is here today to present to you information about 4-H program and our youth. So, Wendy, if you could come on up. Thank you. Well, good morning. Thank you for inviting us once again for our annual report about the 4-H program. We're thrilled to be here. And this is a chance for you to hear directly from some of our 4-H youth how this program impacts them. In 1918, the 4-H Youth Development Program began in Clackamas County. 100 years later, the 4-H program has taught hundreds of thousands of local residents to improve their lives and their communities. Our youth presenters are each going to tell you a little bit more about the history of Clackamas County 4-H. The 4-H Youth Development Program reaches youth through volunteer-led clubs, through school enrichment, camps, and other focused programs. One of the reasons why 4-H is so successful is that we start by developing our programs around theme areas, and we refer to these as projects. So members will also probably talk about what projects they are in. And we've asked them to speculate on what they think the most popular 4-H projects are going to be 100 years from now. This year we had 583 4-Hers enter the county fair this week. There were 11 members who attended our cat fair. We also had 214 youth at horse fair and 30 at the dog fair, which are held here at the fairgrounds in July. So that's a total of 748 total youth who attended one or more of these fairs to show what they had learned throughout the year. We are grateful for the support of the Clackamas County Fair and Event Center that allows our youth to learn and grow at the county fair and at educational opportunities throughout the year. So now let's hear from some of the youth. Grady, do you want to come first? Come on up.
Hello. Hello. My, na my name is Grady Buswell, and um, I'm going into eighth grade this year. And I'm in Sandy Livestock and Mount Hood Critters. And I show sheep and rabbits. And 4-H, I would have nothing else to do if I didn't, wasn't in 4-H, because I'm always doing stuff for 4-H, taking care of my animals. Otherwise, I'd just be sitting at home all day doing nothing without it. And it, it's really, 4-H um, uh, has impacted me because it's made me more responsible and more, it's made me, it's helped me become better with animals too, because I like being able to bond with my animals. And in 100 years, I think that the most popular animal, or the most, most popular 4-H project area will probably be like small animals like rabbits and pigeons and chickens. Thank you. Hi, I'm Daniel Johnson. I'm going into the eighth grade, and I am in San Diego and Mount Hood Critters. And I show pigeons, cats, rabbits, guinea pigs, sheep, and goats. I think that without 4-H, same as Grady, I would not be doing a lot else besides Arba. And what? Oh yeah. Ar Arva is the American Rabbit Breeders Association, and I go to a lot of shows, but uh, it's not like 4-H where you actually have showmanship and everything, but you take your rabbit up to the table, and it's kind of like 4-H confirmation, and you have best of breed and best <coughs> opposite of breed, and then in each breed you have the subdivisions like best of variety, which is the color of the rabbit, and best opposite of the variety. and. In both of those, you have to have a, at least a male and a female in best opposite and best of. And I think how Forage has impacted me is with my responsibility of taking care of my animals and uh, taking care of all the rest of my projects. And also, it has helped me come in my shell a little bit more because I used to be very shy. And I think in a hundred <coughs> years, one of the most popular uh, species to show will be sheep. Thank you very much. Should have asked Mike Bondi what was the most popular thing to show a hundred years ago. Hello, my name is Kyla Leinbach. I'm 11 years old and I'm going into the sixth grade. I'm an independent in the 4-H program and I show sheep and rabbits. 4-H uh, has really impacted my life from going all over and competing in the shows. I think it's helped with my social skills and being with my friends. It's the week that I most um, look forward to during the year and just having fun and being in the program. In 100 years, I think the most popular event in 4-H is probably going to be either the hearth projects or the livestock. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And what are you showing, young man? Oh. <laughs> Hello, my name is Cody O'Neill. Um, here I have my Indian runner duck. His name is Kramer. He's a little cranky this morning. Call him Cranky Kramer. He's camera shy. <laughs> he is a little camera shy. Uh, he's about five years old now, um, so he's getting pretty old, but he's still one of my best show ducks. Um, I take him every year to fair, and uh, just this year they allowed waterfowl back into the fairgrounds. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, a couple of years ago they had an outbreak of avian influenza um, and they cut off waterfowl coming to fair. So, we had to improvise and bring them to a Wilco shop just across the street to uh, do showmanship and confirmation. Uh, it was quite difficult, but they're back now, they're making a comeback. I am very grateful that uh, we are all the way into um, having waterfall back at fair. So grateful. Um, some of the other projects that I do, I do uh, hearth, so photography and videography. And I believe in 100 years that will be the thriving um, 
a thriving subject. And I think that was it. So thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Hello, my name is H.R. Hanlon. I, I am in the fifth grade, and I am homeschooled, and I am in the fuzzy squad. My favorite thing about um, 4-H is probably uh, confirmation and showmanship. Uh, just because I can work with animals, and I can get better at it. I think in a hundred years from now, uh, I, livestock would probably be the, be the most. Uh, well, thank you. What's that you got in your uh, rug there? This is a guinea pig. Guinea pig. Looks like a little puppy from here. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? This yeah. is Vanilla Bean. Oh, nice. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Appreciate thank you. It. Is it safe? <laughs> Hello, my name is Daniel Leinbach. I'm 20 years old. Uh, I graduated 4-H about three, four years ago, but I'm back at the fair to help out with the youth and to help make the best better. And Wendy has fun facts on this sheet. So, The Clackamas County 4-H camp began during World War II when the statewide 4-H conference was canceled due to the war. The camp has run every summer for over 75 years. Today it is held at the Oregon 4-H Center in Lake July. During my 4-H career I was an independent 4-H'er and for my high school career um, I was part of the Clackamas County Ambassador Team and the State Ambassador Team. I was the president my senior year and that was a fantastic experience. I showed sheep, beef cattle, um, poultry, and I also participated in many of the hearth projects and I still use all those skills today with um, either working or ranching and I've actually created my own business because of um, my experience in 4-H in Leathercraft. Le um, I am hoping to become a 4-H leader and um, continue my 4-H career in that, helping out with the youth and um, making 4-H the fantastic program that it really is. Um, the question that we were asked is, uh, what project do we see in 100 years? Uh, will be the biggest and I think it'll be photography just because of how technology is going and how cameras are pretty much accessible by everybody and um, already now photography is one of the biggest projects so I think it's just going to keep growing and growing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bring that, that's a turkey right? Very good Jim. Very good. <laughs> I had relatives who raised thousands of those. Yeah. Um, I have a poultry farm and I raise turkeys on it. My mom does, and I help out. Mm -hmm. So my name is Celia Racel, and I'm going into ninth grade at Rex Putnam High School, and I'm in the Fuzzy Squad 4-H group. Some of my favorite activities in 4-H are probably the small animal programs, because I feel like everyone has to work together to get their projects done. And if you make it into master showmanship, then you have to work with other people in different projects to be able to know all the animals. Because Master Showmanship, there's four different species that are shown. There's poultry, pigeons, rabbits, and cavies, or guinea pigs. And um, you have to talk with other people in those species to be able to know how to show them. For example, I do rabbits, poultry, and pigeons, but I have to talk to someone else to do cavies because I don't know very much about them. And then this is my meat pen turkey. She's market turkey. I'm going to auction her off. She got, she's the grand champion market turkey this year. And I'm really excited because this is the first year they get to do market turkey. So 
it's really exciting that we get to show them. In 100 years, I think one of the most popular projects um, is going to be animals, because I feel like a lot of people won't be able to have them as much, and they'll be really excited to see them at the fair and be able to work with them. And also, it's a very social group, because you have, as I said earlier, you have to talk to people and you have to work with them. And so I don't see anybody like on their electronics or phones, so they're all talking together or looking at up stuff in their books. So I feel like it's a very social group. Thank you, and that turkey's been waving at us the whole time. <laughs> I'm going to share with you some of just our, our fun historical facts about Clackamas County 4-H. Um, so, um, for example, uh, we were talking about project areas. For the last uh, 30 or more years, Horses has been our number one project area in the county. Um, but lately, it's been at a near tie with photography. Uh, in, uh, in, in 2018, this year, we sent 40 youth to the Oregon 4-H Summer Conference, and that made us the largest county delegation this year. In the 30s and 40s, this was a, a huge statewide event. In fact, it was not uncommon for Clackamas County to send over 100 youth to what was then a month-long experience. Uh, also, Clackamas County 4-H has six honorees in the Oregon 4-H Hall of Fame, and one of them, our former Extension faculty member Linda Erickson, is also in the National 4-H Hall of Fame. In 2001, Clackamas County 4-H members were invited to the Oregon Zoo and consulted on the design of their family farm exhibit. Since 2013, all Clackamas County 4-H volunteers have to complete a continuing education program every two years. And this was a pioneering program. Um, and it's, uh, it was one of the, the very first requirements. Uh, it was the first here in Oregon and one of the first nationally. And it's been shared in scholarly circles. We've won awards for this program, and it's now being adopted by counties throughout Oregon and in other states. Um, another fun fact is that in 1973, the words, and my world, were added to the end of the 4-H pledge. So when some of our old timers come visit us in the 4-H building, they like to share the 4-H pledge with us. We can tell they're an old timer because they don't add, and my world, on the pledge. Uh, the Clackamas County 4-H Association is our incorporated 501c3 that supports 4-H uh, programming throughout the county. And they, uh, they actually became a formal 501c3 organization in 1978. We have a long history of uh, private philanthropy that supports our program. They have a fundraiser raffle in the 4-H exhibit hall this week that we invite people to check out. In 1948, Vern Palmblad became a 4-H leader, and 70 years later, he is our longest-serving 4-H volunteer. He's 93 years old. Uh, some of the newer projects in Clackamas County include cats, videography, robotics, and performing art. We've also added new classes in the last few years, so 4-Hers can experience the Celebrate Our World, Fashion Review Lookbook, um, and Photography Scavenger Hunt. Um, you may or may not have heard that Horning Hall was actually the original 4-H FFA dorm. At that time, all exhibits were shown here in the main pavilion, and the current 4-H building was originally built as the dance pavilion at the fairgrounds. Oh. And then um, one last little fact, the, uh, that Oregon State University is home to the Oregon 4-H program, and OSU is our land-grant university here for Oregon, and it is also celebrating an anniversary. This is Oregon State University's 150th anniversary. So to commemorate our 4-H 100 year centennial, you might have noticed that many of us are sporting our 4-H t-shirts. Um, we do have um, t-shirts for all of you as well. Um, and we are really looking forward to our next 100 years. And I think Mike Bondi has a couple words to close. Thank you.
Um, and I'd like to just say we will do more sharing uh, tonight. There's going to be a centennial barbecue celebrating our 100 years here in Clackamas County from 5 to 7 p.m., inviting all the commissioners, all the folks in the county, and all of you in the audience as well. Um, 5 to 7 p.m. tonight in the Grove barbecue area. And uh, Clark's Grange, Bev is here. Gary's in the back. They're going to be doing the food for us. It's going to be an old-fashioned uh, chicken barbecue. Uh, going to be $10 per, for adults, 5 for youth, 12 and under. We'd encourage everybody to come and join a great meal. Uh, and we'll do a little more sharing, uh, as Wendy and the 4-H'ers did, about the history of our programs and some of the memories. Uh, some of our people, as Wendy mentioned, have been with uh, our programs in extension and 4-H for generations. And uh, we're proud of that tradition and we look forward to sharing with you tonight. Thank you. And thank you. Well, next up is citizen communication and first up is Bill Osborne. Burn. Thank you, Bill. Just tell us where you're from. I'm from Gladstone. Thank you. So uh, thanks for having the, uh, the meeting here at the fair. It's always nice. My daughter actually comes with me, and the free admission to the fair, I'm sure, has nothing to do with that. I just wanted to let everybody know about uh, solve events. I do one down at High Rocks. I've adopted that area, both sides, uh, the Oregon City and Gladstone side. We have one this Saturday from 10 to noon. Can you come a little uh, closer to the microphone? Oh, sorry. Start over okay, uh, this that. this Saturday we have a solve event down at High Rocks from 10 to 2, or 10 to noon, I'm sorry. We also have one coming up on September 29th. So always looking for more volunteers. Uh, if any of you want to get out in the community and, and help, we've uh, got plenty of garbage to pick up. That area is overloved by the, uh, the campers in our area. So I just wanted to uh, let you know about that. And we're always looking for people to take on other areas, uh, trying to pick up our parks in our area, uh, Riverside, which uh, sometimes get in pretty bad shape. The High Rocks area, since we've been doing monthly cleanups, has gotten a lot better. Um, I don't know if the campers aren't down there as much or uh, if people are just starting to pick up because it's not as dirty. So again, I just wanted to promote that event and invite all of you uh, there. We stage up on the bridge, the pedestrian bridge there by DMV. And uh, it's open to anybody who wants to come out and give a hand, so I'd love to see some of you there. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Don Kingsborough. I was going to do it last. Okay. So, uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Don Kingsborough. I live in West Lynn, but today I'm representing the Clackamas Pomona Grange. At a uh, former meeting that I came to, I was asked to report on a couple of different things to you. And one of those was community service, and the other was food. Oh, by the way, enjoy the cookies. Yeah, That's, thank uh, you, you know, we have that delightful booth in Horning Hall, and uh, uh, you're welcome to come over and uh, participate, to help, whatever. So uh, what I'm going to give you is a report on the community service that some of the Granges in Clackamas County have been doing. And I, I gave Mr. Krupp a, a copy, which I may or may not follow. So, <laughs> so I want to report that uh, Warner Grange, and I also gave you, um, there's a copy of our Grange Bulletin for each of you. Okay, on the very back page is a feature about cuddle cots, so you'll be able to read about that. <clears throat> Warner Grange allows free use of our hall by Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, 4-H, and others that are nonprofit or community groups. Warner Grange is in the process of collecting school supplies, some of which will go with our dictionary program and some will go to homeless students. Warner Grange has purchased seven cuddle cots and by the end of this month we will have presented six to hospitals in Oregon, including Meridian Park, which is as close or as any. Uh, Willamette Falls was given one by Clark's Grange. <clears throat> Maplewood Grange, which is just down the highway, has sponsored a rummage sale to, to benefit Boy Scout Troop 258 of Canby, sponsored a Zuba instructor for starting uh, class, 
donate a weekly use of the hall to Scout Troop 271, sponsored a collection of school supplies for low-income and foster children in Clackamas County, and they've helped sponsor a team of youth square dancers. I think that's kind of exciting. Maybe square dancing will make a comeback. Harding Grange allows the Boring Carver CPO the use of the Grange Hall at no charge, as does Beaver Creek Grange for the CPO in their area. Harding Grange has a policy that non-Grangers that are members of their community get the hall at a reduced fee. The Logan Community Cemetery Board, Logan Cemetery Community Board, whatever, is offered that hall for free. <clears throat> There's also a Gleaner team that meets weekly at Harding Grange. Redland Grange, and I, I think you'll find this exciting, Redland Grange continues to feed the hungry and the homeless each Monday at Clackamat Park. That's a day when our fathers home, our father's place, is not open. And so they fill the gap there on Monday. Two members, Gert Thompson and Coralyn Congdon, spend most of Sunday preparing food and then to join other members of the Grange to serve 50 to 75 people at Clackamat Park. Redland has uh, two recycling bins that they maintain at their hall for the members, to, me members of their community to bring uh, recyclables to, mostly paper. And the Redland members also have a regular uh, schedule of picking up trash on Hatton Road in their community. <coughs> Molala Grange donates monthly to the Molala Adult Center. They donate items to the Keeping Oregon Warm program. The Gleaners use their hall for free to distribute food to those of need in the community. The Red Cross uses their hall for free and collected blood for, uh, from 23 donors. They donate money to the Clackamas County Foster Kids School Supply Drive and they donate every quarter to the canine listeners for service dogs for people with disabilities that need this uh, donated. Um, they also donated to the Kiwanis Forestry Department and they did something for the Molala Food Bank. They had a dinner and they raised six thousand dollars. Boring Damascus Grange and that's anything but boring. It's an exciting Grange. <laughs> Friends of the Boring Station Trailhead which uh, they do a lot with the park out there at Boring, the Boring Station Trailhead. Um, they donate their hall for free and they do a barbecue and they do lots of stuff out there. Uh, they also support and attend the um, uh, Boring Citizen Planning Organization for Clackamas County. They allow Nuts and Bolts Theater to use their Grange and they have a summer program for that. Um, Boring Damascus Grange will have a free dinner on October 19th and that will be followed by a candidates forum. Springwater Grange makes a monthly contribution to the Estacada Food Bank. And at our national night out, Clackamas County was good enough to supply a canine unit and a police officer. And they came out and uh, explained to about 40 Springwater neighbors uh, the purpose of the canine unit and how that operates. For each can of food that was brought that night, you got a scoop of ice cream. That was a good deal. <clears throat> that was a very good deal. 40 of us enjoyed that. The food and money collected that evening was donated to the Estacada Food Bank. The 4-H Club at Springwater uses Springwater Grange Hall, and any civic organization in the area is welcome to use that Grange Hall. Springwater Grange, as well as most Granges in Clackamas County, participate in the Words for Thirds program. I kind of assume you know about that. The Words, Words for Thirds program is a dictionary program where we buy dictionaries and present them to third graders. My own Grange, Warner Grange, has been doing this about 15 years. So every year we go back to, and in, our, in our case, we go back to two elementary schools and present every child in that dictionary with a, their own dictionary. And that, in this day of computers and laptops and telephones or cell phones, that doesn't sound like much, but when you see the smiles on these kids and when you see the notes that they write to you that we get a month or so later, it's an incredibly exciting. And most Granges in Clackamas County and a lot of Granges all over Oregon and Washington do that. Uh, the last community service thing I wanted to mention is Sunnyside Grange did a shred day. They earned over $1,000, which they gave to the Oregon Food Bank. So somebody, and it just might have been Commissioner Fisher, asked me about upcoming food events. <laughs> in addition to the cookies, Springwater Grange starts their monthly breakfast come this Saturday, or Saturday, excuse me, 1st of September. We serve from 7 to 11. It's $5. That's all you can eat. There's lots of food. And if you're really lucky, you can see Brother Humberston serving food. 
He comes out there once in a while, every other month, I think, and he helps serve. On the other month, he goes to Beaver Creek Grange, and they have a breakfast on the same Saturday, but they start in October. Um, Harding Grange is going to have a chili cook-off. Now, this sounds like a pretty good deal to me. They're going to have a cook-off on September the 8th from 1 to 4. $5 gets you a taste of all the chili offered, and the note I got said you get seconds. You get three raffle tickets and a beverage. Then desserts are a dollar, but they have a local band that's going to be out there from two to four. All the money collected is going to an organization called Building Blocks for Kids. Harding Grange will cover all the expenses, purchasing the food and all that stuff. So all the money will go to Building Blocks for Kids. Eagle Creek, Eagle Creek Grange is having a spaghetti dinner on September 21st. It'll be eight dollars. Springwater Grange is having a free dinner on September 30th, followed by a candidates forum. And I don't know an awful lot about that yet. Um, John DeHaas is in charge of that. The plan is to have a potluck hosted by Springwater with a main course provided by Springwater. It's going to be at 530. So the main event is I want to, I am going to introduce Shaniqua Coleman. And Shaniqua has a delightful, absolutely delightful presentation that um, the ball was started rolling a year ago when you all had your meeting here at the fair. So Shaniqua from Clark's Grange. Thank you. And good morning, commissioners. My name is Shaniqua Coleman, and I'm a member of the Clark's Grange number 261. And in May, the Clark's Grange held a um, bazaar, and that was led by Annette Naylor and her um, daughter-in-law, uh, Tara Naylor. Um, that bazaar, getting tongue. Just a moment, sorry. <laughs> All proceeds um, from that bazaar are going to be donated to the Veterans Homeless Housing Project. Um, with the Clark's Craft Bazaar, um, there was a display and a silent auction, as well as a lunch to raise the funds for um, the Veterans Homeless Project. So. I am happy to be presenting this morning a check in the amount of $1,109 that was raised at the Clark's Craft Bazaar. And if it's okay, I'd like to bring it up to you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And our veterans housing uh, project is coming along well. Uh, we got a little ways to go, but Paul, when are we going to be opening that? Uh, hopefully the middle of September, so just a few weeks away. Great. Thank you. And Paul's, uh, I'd say, uh, made an extra effort on this project, moving the, the uh, units to the uh, property, uh, going out and with his level to make sure it was level. I've uh, been uh, uh, spending a lot of time making sure this project is a success. So thank you, Paul. Uh, next up, we have Eric Holfeld. Good morning, Commissioners, and thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yep. All right. I just have a simple question because, you see, you've heard a lot about the tolling on I-5 and 205 and now even Highway 26. And the question as you go forward is, who's going to be paying for that? Is it gonna be the people that live here and their businesses that operate? Because that's the big sit issue, situation you have to look at. In addition, locally, you've been discussing the vehicle registration fee. And my question is, if you recall, the voters of Clackamas County voted to have a vote on any future vehicle registration fee. Are you planning to have a vote? No, they did not vote on a future vehicle registration fee. They voted on the ability to have a voice in that. No, and, the, they and, the, and the question I have is, 
Have you gotten uh, support from all the cities? Have the citizens actually voted on it? Because you've, you've got not only two issues that are going to hurt the people that are going to be uh, going to work, commuting to work. One is the uh, vehicle registration fee, if you put that in. The second one is the, um, the tolling on the main freeways. And the issue that I have with the question, the main question I have is, does the Department of Transportation have the ability to absorb that money and use it effectively within the time frame that they, they need? Or are they going to be woefully short and all this money is going to pile up in a bank account someplace? So that's, that's a couple of key questions that I hope you take into consideration as you go forth and start discussing these issues. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that's the uh, citizen communication, and we're going to go on now to the consent agenda, and I'd ask the clerk to read the consent agenda by title only. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Under Health, Housing, and Human Services, we have approval of two agreements with Northwest Housing Alternatives for the Pleasant Avenue Veterans Housing Apartments Project in Oregon City, approval of an application to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Continuum of Care Program Annual Renewal of Funds, approval of an agency services contract with LifeWorks Northwest for outpatient mental health services for uninsured and indigenous residents of Clackamas County, approval of a professional, technical, and personal services contract with Northwest Family Services for Spanish mental health first aid trainings, approval of a grant agreement with LifeWorks Northwest for relief nursery services, approval of amendment number two to an agency services agreement with Northwest Housing Alternatives for home-based program operations and financial assistance, approval of an agreement with Green Energy Solutions for weatherization major measure construction services, approval of an agreement with Alpha Energy Savers for weatherization major measure construction services, approval of an agreement with Energy Comfort and Construction LLC for weatherization major measure construction services, approval of an agreement with Performance Insulation and Energy Services for weatherization major measure construction services, and approval of agreement with Reinhardt Family Inc. for weatherization for major measure construction services under our Department of Transportation Development, approval of a supplemental project agreement number 32607 with Oregon Department of Transportation for South End Road at Milepost 3.8 project, approval of cooperative agreement number 32726 with Oregon Department of Transportation for systematic signals and illumination project in Clackamas County, under elected officials, approval of previous business meeting minutes, and approval of a memorandum of understanding between Clackamas County Board of Commissioners and the Tourism and Development Council, and under our technology services, approval of a contract with Tech Heads Inc. for technology services server room upgrade. And finally, under water environment services, approval of amendment number three to the contract documents with CH2M Hill Engineers for the Tri-City Water Resource Recovery Facility Solids Handling Improvement Project. And approval of a purchase from Evacua Water Technologies LLC for Bioxide for Water Environment Services Wastewater Treatment Plants, and that concludes the consent agenda. Well, thank you. You can breathe now. All right. With that, uh, does any member of the commission want to remove or pull an item from the consent agenda? Um, yes. I don't want to remove anything. I just want to highlight, because we were just talking, Chair Bernard was mentioning that the transitional shelter will be opening hopefully in mid-September, but there are a couple items on this consent agenda which help us in our continuum for housing veterans. We are, have a partnership with Northwest Housing Alternatives for the Pleasant Avenue Veterans Housing Apartments, which will include uh, housing for 24 households that are veterans. And so we are working really hard on providing the continuum, and I just wanted to highlight that, that that is one of the things that we will be approving in this consent agenda today. Thank you. Well, with that, I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda. I move we approve the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the consent agenda. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Next, we're on to the county administrator updates. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I've got just a couple of items. Uh, first and foremost is last week our disaster management department uh, initiated a uh, public campaign 
uh, to encourage residents to enroll in our new emergency notification system. This uh, system allows county residents to receive critical emergency messaging via email, phone, text during uh, times of disasters. Uh, and this is a, a new system which replaces an older system that we've had in place. Uh, but uh, we want to let folks know who've been uh, registered on our older system that they will need to re-enroll in the new system. And so we have been uh, letting people know that and encouraging people to re-enroll as well as encouraging uh, others to sign up and be a part of the notification system. Uh, our goal is to exceed at least 14,000 signups. Uh, for the system and, and beyond. I want to encourage uh, anyone uh, in the county to sign up at www.clackamas.us forward slash public alerts. And public alerts is just all one word with no space in between. And uh, a good job for our disaster management staff uh, for putting this together. The last thing I want to make sure folks know is uh, yeah, the next two weeks, the Board of County Commissioners will be uh, on recess and our next regular business meeting will take place on September 6, 10 a.m. at the Red Soils campus. Thanks very much. Enjoy the fair. Thank you. And next we're on to uh, Commissioner Communications and Paul, you're up. Yeah, well, I guess I'll just want to respond to uh, the last uh, public speaker, um, Mr. Hofeld. I think Mr. Hofeld's message, at least that I got out of that, uh, I think there's a lot of uh, money measures out there. Uh, the legislature passed a housing, uh, not a housing, but a transportation uh, package last uh, summer. Uh, we're now being imposed. Uh, taxes being toes and fees are being imposed. Uh, we have a potential tolling. Uh, legislature is going to figure that out. ODOT's going to figure that out. Um, there's also perhaps an opportunity for a ballot measure um, that might be circulated uh, next year. Uh, we have discussions about a VRF that are taking place. There's a no number of m money measures that relates to transportation that um, uh, they're probably in the aggregate add up to a lot of money. And I think in sense, I think a lot of people really want to know what we're going to get for that, for, those, for all those fees or costs or whatever to be passed on. So I think there's hard to answer some of those questions right now because it's not in our hands on the tolling aspect. But I suspect that uh, it'll be a long ways off before we ever see anything actually happen. So at least a year or two, Eric, and I'll keep you apprised as it comes up. What I did want to talk about today was um, volunteers. Uh, last night I attended the rodeo, um, and of course, like any event, uh, the event here we have today, uh, events all around us, those things don't happen without people and volunteers, people volunteering their time. And as it was evidenced last night, and evidence here to make this fair happen, we rely heavily upon our volunteers. So when you see a volunteer or fair worker here today, say thank you, appreciate them. Uh, we also have our vendors here, and they provide help with uh, offsetting some of the costs for this event. So I want to thank them and our, on our fair board and everyone else who really makes this event happen. It's pretty awesome, and it wouldn't happen without people volunteering their own personal time. So. Just my sincere gratitude and thanks, and also the 4-H'ers and everyone involved here. So thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. And Ken, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is this? Yeah, there we go. Um, I'll be brief. Uh, just a few things that have uh, been involved in this week. I attended the Mount Hood community meeting to discuss some planning and land use issues with the community up there this last week. I went to the Blue Star Memorial dedication at Camp Withicum for that is a dedication and monument for all veterans who have served uh, the United States. Uh, a state broadband uh, rules committee meeting down in Salem. Um, monitoring that and making sure that uh, cities and counties opportunities on the broadband spectrum uh, are protected. Um, also took a tour of our forestry lands uh, east of Estacada and took a, a direct look at how we do our harvesting on our lands here in Clackamas County. And a point I'd like to make on that is that our team harvests to the state standards or better wherever they can. Um, oftentimes having much larger uh, barriers of, of uh, vegetation between where they harvest and streams and, and that sort of thing. Uh, we truly do an excellent job of sustainable harvesting on our own county lands. And then the last was a constituent meeting on uh, uh, 
uh, internet service provision with a business person who has a lot of interest in what we may be doing in that area. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. And Commissioner Fisher. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's always wonderful to be here at the fair and to connect with our constituents, our community, with all of the animals, with all of the volunteers. And it's fitting that we reflect on the importance of what this fair means, because it is the importance of family and connections, and this is what, what we value here in Clackamas County. I did want to share um, just a little bit of a tribute. Yesterday, I learned that my Uncle Reuben passed away. He uh, was a veteran in the Air Force as well as my father was. What I appreciated most about my Uncle Reuben is that he kept my father's memory alive by communicating to me the stories and the um, service that my father gave to our country. My father died when I was just 22 years old, and so I wasn't quite old enough to really sit with him and get the stories, but I so appreciated my Uncle Reuben for keeping that memory alive, and if not for the service of our veterans, for our first responders, for our folks that are serving in the military, for all of our armed forces, we would not have this amazing quality of life, the community that we celebrate and that we share. This fair is a beautiful, um, beautiful sense of community and we can all be very, very grateful for it. So thank you. Thank you. And Commissioner Schrader. Well, a few things I've been doing this week. Uh, Clackamas County is becoming uh, a leader, not only here in our own county, but with the rest of the, our fellow 36 counties in the state. Uh, I was at the Association of Oregon Counties. Uh, they had their board meeting here in Clackamas County, up at Welch's, at the resort at the mountain. And I'm happy to say uh, we'll be moving up into leadership. I'll be president of the organization next year. And one of the things I've been doing in that capacity, and I want everybody to think about this, uh, I've been in regular contact with uh, most of our colleagues across the state, in Central Oregon, in Southern Oregon, Eastern Oregon, because as you know, uh, some of the haze we've been seeing lately is largely because of fires that we have been experiencing across the state. So together with the folks at the Association of Oregon Counties, we've been monitoring that. I've been in contact with my colleagues. Uh, I have to really send out kudos to our firefighters and all the emergency responders that have really throughout the state been helping communities uh, cope with this. Uh, we haven't had any major evacuations, but we are having air quality issues. And the, our, our own state forestry service, if you get a moment, they do have a website to take a look and you can see what's happening across the, the state. So we, we stand in solidarity with the rest of our colleagues across the state. We've been very lucky, knock on wood this year, uh, that we haven't had any major fires. We have in the past. I remember Molala last year. Uh, we got pretty close. So this is something we are experiencing uh, across the state. So keep those folks in your thoughts and prayers. Let's hope the fire season gets over soon, sooner than later. Uh, and again, thank you to all those firefighters. Now I'd just like to say a little bit about the fair. When I first moved to Canby, Oregon in 1979, I think I was about 24 years old, and uh, I had two kids, ended up with five kids, um, living on Three Rivers Farm, which is just down the road here. And I would never thought in a million years that I would ever end up here as a county commissioner. <laughs> and I'm grateful for that opportunity because it, gives me, it gave me an opportunity to really not just to know my own community here in Canby, uh, but actually go throughout all the counties. I mean, all our cities and all our rural and urban areas. And we're a unique county because we have both. We have really highly urbanized areas and we have very, very rural areas. And as a rural uh, parent and mom, we raise strawberries. We raise sheep. My, all my kids learned how to hoe at an early age and move irrigation, drip irrigation, as well as overhead irrigation. And my boys today... Uh, 
Steve and RJ, and, and Travis occasionally shows up too, they are now growing hops on the farm. So my, my hope is that one day when you go to the rodeo and you go to the beer tent, you'll see Schrader beer there. You know, that would be, that would be like the icing on the cake for me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they, they drove with me everywhere delivering strawberries all over the Portland metropolitan area from our farm here. And I know for sure I got a blue ribbon here for my honey, because I was a beekeeper too, 35 years ago because I was pregnant with my oldest son, okay, <laughs> who is now 35. And somewhere I still have that blue ribbon. And throughout my, uh, my time as a mom, uh, Tuesday was a big day here because it was it was kitty day. The rides were half price, and I would come here with all my girlfriends, and we'd be here with all our kids. And next year, I'm happy to say, my grandchildren. I have two, and I've got one on the way. Uh, they'll all be out here visiting us in August next year. So we'll be planning a whole week at the fair and the rodeo. So enjoy the fair, everyone. Great, thank you. And finally. Um I wanted, as you heard, the Grange is, does a heck of a lot. They're all over the place. It looks like uh, 145 years. Um, and, and these folks are also volunteers. And like Paul mentioned, uh, you know, the, the Grange is alive today because of the volunteers. Um, and I also would like to thank uh, our staff who is here filming our meeting. Appreciate you taking the time and coming out to the fairgrounds and I imagine we'll see you around here a little bit longer. Uh, my roots are actually uh, from McMinnville. Um, we, I have relatives who had a huge turkey farm uh, and I hear they're pretty dumb animals. They'll drown in a rainstorm. I don't know if that's true or not. But uh, my grandfather moved to Milwaukee and, and owned an automotive repair shop for uh, uh, 93 years, uh, recently uh, sold the property, but I just live up the street and I'm back to my roots raising cattle, Black Angus cattle, just down the road from here. So uh, I really love the life in the rural community, but it is a lot of hard work. Uh, sunrise, the sunset, you're always doing something. And I appreciate the hard work that uh, the the folks here on the board do, and all the volunteers that work at the uh, uh, to make this event a success. And I thank you all very much. With that, we're adjourned. Thank you. Yeah.